looks like it's Aubrey Plaza. Oh man, I don't know why she's here, but I just, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna. Wait, what? She never liked you. Good luck, loser. What's the meaning of this? No! No! You know what show I always had an affinity for as a kid? Scooby-Doo! There was just something about it that I couldn't quite put my finger on but still loved as a child. So, you know what they had to do, right? Despite the original show being created at the end of the 60s and being syndicated well into today, they just had to make some of that video game money and pump out a Scooby-Doo video game. Actually, there really weren't any Scooby-Doo games released until Scooby-Doo Mystery came out for both the Super Nintendo and the Sega Genesis back in 1995. Unless you count the game that came out for the Commodore 64 and the ZX Spectrum, but... <laughs> you know... <laughs> Oh, nobody counts those. So let's play us some Scooby Dooby Doo. Let's start off with the Super Nintendo version. And right off the bat, it looks like the title screen is very similar to the intro of the show, but wait. Objection! That's the wrong music. That's not the Scooby Doo theme at all. I would play the actual theme song to let you hear it, but I'm afraid I'll get content matched thanks to good old YouTube. So here's a reproduction of what it sounds like. Anyways, despite the absolutely wrong music being played, the game starts off with the game on their way to a shipwreck, of all places, for their... vacation. Uh... But just as soon as they make their way on deck, BAM! A ghost sea man appears! Fred doesn't seem too worried though, cause he's just kinda hanging back, chilling, like the Fonz. Hey. So I guess now we have a mystery to solve. The mystery as to why there's a ghost sea man on board a shipwreck. He died on the boat. Investigation's over. Give me all the Scooby Snacks. No matter how much I thought I had already solved the mystery, the game wanted to search around for clues as I thought something fishy was going down on board. I guess the mysterious ghost sea man tipped them off. So just like in the show, it's up to Shaggy and Scooby to do all the dirty work while everyone else goes off to make out or whatever. Let's just hope that Scooby and Shaggy can keep it in their pants until after they solve the mystery. Yeah, that's right, they can't fool me. I know just how close they are, just, just, just look at them. Mm, they make me sick. So for most of the game, I went off trying to find clues to eventually uncover a crime in the works. It's actually kind of unique and maybe even groundbreaking because it's one of the first games, if not the first game that I'd ever seen use a sanity meter of sorts, where the longer you see something that's scary, the more it'll fill up. And if it fills up all the way, you're dead. You hear that, Amnesia the Dark Descent? Slender the Eight Pages and Amnesia Machine for Pigs and a whole ton of other modern horror games? One of your main mechanics? It originated from a Scooby-Doo game. Although, I guess they didn't really have a good idea of what's scary because rats and birds that walk back and forth aren't very frightening. Instead, they're more like scientific marvels. Like, look at this rat. It's walking on two legs like a person. And this bird, well, just, uh, I'm sure there's something cool about it. Uh, it's kind of like Jacques, I guess. BAM! Nobel Prize, please! Anyways, after finding some sort of trolley, the ghost seaman appeared yet again in another attempt to scare me. I don't know if he had a sudden involuntary moment of nervousness, but Fred was all like, THROW THE TROLLEY AT HIM! So I did. And I guess I hit him with so much force that he actually opened an entirely new area of the ship I couldn't access yet. That ghost seaman was all like, physics? More like fishics, and just went like, <laughs> At any rate, one of the qualms I have with this game is how it teaches you to do things. For instance, one of the actions you can do besides running and jumping is having Scooby sniff on the ground. You won't know what it does until you reach this very obvious point in the beginning where they just spell it out for you. It really makes you wonder just how lazy the developers were. Like instead of simply telling you where to search, they could have had you talk to Fred and then Fred could have been like, Hey man, make sure to watch for cracks in the floor. like." Maybe Scoob could sniff it out. And then you go over to the crack and sniff it out, and there it is. But nope, just good old 
Search here! Although the game does kind of make up for its bad design with being able to kill enemies with a trolley. Yeah, that's right. Take it, you son of a- so after finding some more clues, I was told to go outside to continue my investigation of what's slowly unraveling to be a smuggling scheme. After retrieving a box that I apparently needed even though there were like 20 other boxes on the other side of the ship I could have used, I found something even more devious than whatever crime the game was trying to stop. Platforming. Now granted, it's not the worst I've ever seen in a game, but to see Shaggy and Scooby jumping on platforms made me scratch my head a little bit. It felt tacked on and more of an unwelcome guest in the game that's really just an overglorified treasure hunt. Although I did get to kill a rat with a fish. It's the circle of life. So after scrounging around the ship, I found the last few clues that definitively indicate Velma's thesis on the matter at hand. Somebody's been smuggling gold from the bottom of the ocean. So to try and stop whoever's at fault for this crime in progress, Freddy very carefully theorized and developed a trap to capture the purported suspect, the Ghost Seaman. All right, let's see your plan, Freddy. Wait, I got it. This is the dumbest plan I've ever seen. So Freddy's telling me that in order to lure the ghost seaman, he wants to bait him with a pirate teddy bear planted on top of a rug that's on top of the trolley. Wait, 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 wait. All right, first and foremost, why would the teddy bear lure the ghost seaman? Is he like emotionally attached to the teddy? How would the rug completely cover the shape and size of the trolley without the ghost seaman getting suspicious? And how would the ghost seaman not notice his handle sticking completely out of the rug? It is how in the world does Freddy think this is going to work? I can't believe that worked! Welp, I'm done playing that. For a Scooby-Doo game, it felt more like a scavenger hunt, which is kind of what they do in the show because they're collecting clues and stuff, but it doesn't really translate well into a game because there is nothing else to do besides collect clues. So here's hoping that the Genesis version fares just a little bit better. I have a good feeling about this game. Unlike the Super Nintendo version, it looks like the Genesis version has two different campaigns that you can pick right off the bat. Blake's Hotel and Ha Ha Carnival. Now I'm not much of a fan of Scary Carnival, so I think I'll stick with the hotel. I have a really good feeling about this game! So the game starts off with the mystery machine making its way for Daphne's uncle's ski lodge. As soon as they get there, he explains his problems with a certain ghost that's been terrorizing his hotel at the peak of the ski season. He says it's probably some ancient Native American chieftain that's haunting the resort. Why is it some Native American ghost that's haunting the resort? Probably because the place is built on a Native American burial ground. I mean, at least he's being honest, but come on, man. To a certain extent, you had to expect this. You can't just be like, oh, Dane, my property is haunted. If only I hadn't slaughtered 33 people under my house. Regardless, the game happily offers to help out and yet again leave Shaggy and Scooby on their own. Man, they must all really like making out. After the cutscene, I'm actually kind of surprised to find out that this game is a point and click. Yeah, the developers totally did an Aladdin on me where both versions of the game are completely different. The Super Nintendo version was made by Argonaut Software, whereas the Genesis version was made by Illusions Gaming Company. I couldn't really find much information on them, so I assume they went under sometime after this game. <laughs> Illusions, more like they were under the illusion they'd be in the gaming industry very long. <laughs> I'm good. I'm so good. For a point and click on the Genesis of all things, it actually looks pretty nice. The animations are fluid, the graphics are colorful, and look similar to the cartoon, except for the opening where Daphne talks. Like, Jesus, somebody needs to crack the case on who screw up drawing those frames. And that music. Just gotta feel the rhythm. I just gotta feel the rhythm. I just gotta feel the rhythm. Despite what the game does well, I must admit that the interface had me confused for a little bit. I didn't quite understand that you can move the cursor onto the selection you wanna make. Like for instance, if I wanted to pick up this can opener, I would have to move the cursor onto take down at the bottom of the screen, press A to select the action, and then move onto the can opener and press A to take it. I guess the thing that confused me was I thought that you couldn't move the cursor down to the bottom of the screen, and that surely there had to be some button that changed the selection, but you know, the Genesis controller only has three buttons, it can only do so much. It takes a couple seconds longer than what it would if this game were on the PC and you could just click onto the object you wanted to take. It's a bit clunky, but for a console point and click game, 
which there really aren't that many to begin with, it gets the job done. One thing I love about this game though is how much it actually feels like a Scooby-Doo game. The interactions you have with the villain are very reminiscent of the show. Like, look at this gag here. They actually use this bit as a puzzle where you're supposed to go through every door. Once you go through one of the doors, the villain chases you all over. When you go through every door, the one at the end of the hallway that was originally locked unlocks. That's actually incredibly clever to not only use a nostalgic gag from the show, but to also implement it as a puzzle. I must admit though, I'm not very good at old school point and clicks, so I wasn't too entirely sure what to do after that. I just kind of looked up a walkthrough and then, well, yeah. But that doesn't mean I didn't enjoy the game. Even though the game drudges into territory that's even stranger and actually a bit creepy beyond the hotel being built on a Native American burial ground. Now, I know what you're thinking. What could possibly be stranger than that? Well, I'll tell you. Hidden behind a secret passageway in the basement, far off in an underground mine shaft, hidden from the normalities of everyday life behind a maze, lies the most sinister thing found in any game. A sex dungeon containing Daphne's captured uncle! Oh, I just can't move with these games! Okay, I'm done! I'm done! <laughs> It's okay. You won't hurt anyone else again. Well, that's the end of the Scooby-Doo mystery games. If you're a Scooby-Doo fanatic, or if you're just looking to bump up your collection, I'd recommend the Genesis version. It's at least worth a playthrough to see what it brings to the table as a Scooby-Doo game. It's just kind of a shame that's still not exactly the kind of Scooby-Doo game that I'm really looking for, because I'm looking for more like, kind of like an action platformer game. But just as long as it's not like the kind of platforming that was in the Super Nintendo version, because that stuff was jank. It's also kind of a shame that it's Halloween and it's time to move on to other things to make videos on. But, as always next year. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching my video, it really means a lot. If you liked what you saw, then please be sure to give the video a like, and if you really liked it, then please consider subscribing. It would mean the world. I hope you all have a fantastic and safe Halloween, and hopefully I'll see you next time, which hopefully that won't take four months again. Man, I'm really bad at that.